Hey filmmakers, today I'm gonna to show you how to make digital look a little bit more like film, and it requires zero post-production. We all desire that beautiful, organic look that film gives you, but it can be pretty difficult to get on these digital cameras. When you're shooting on a DSLR or mirrorless camera, it usually looks way too sharp, and it just gives you that video look. So that is where these black pro mist filters come in. The ones that we're talking about today are made by Tiffin, but you can get them from a whole host of other companies that didn't send me this or pay me to say any of these. I just really like these. If you're not already familiar with black pro mist filters, basically it's a piece of glass with black mist on it. And it's very, very small and hard to see, but it's there. And what I'm using today is black pro mist one half, and you can get them in all different strengths one eighth being the smallest, and then you can go to a quarter, a half, one, and two. Basically what the filters do is soften up your image. So I'm gonna screw one on right now. If you haven't already noticed, this lamp behind me just got a little bit softer and more diffused, as well as this light source. And my skin is looking a little bit more soft and more glowy now. We went out with two identical Sony a7S cameras and Rokinon lenses as well, using the 24 millimeter and the 50 millimeter. Now, in every setup, one of them had the black promise filter on and one of them had nothing on. Now, I didn't add any ND filters to either of them because I didn't want any of the color cast or vignetting that comes with ND filters. So in order to keep a shallow depth of field, but compensate for the overexposure, I did crank up my shutter speed. Say what? but I only did this for testing purposes. Otherwise, I'm always shooting at a 180 degree shutter angle. As you can see from those example shots, the black promise filter effect was most apparent when you were shooting directly into a light source. So when we were looking at the sun, it really bloomed a lot and made that light just really bleed into other things around it. And I think that has a really nice and organic look to it, but it can also be a bad thing, especially when you're shooting at night. So what we saw from the night shots was that when you're shooting into the signs and headlights and street lamps is there's just a ton of blooming and haziness. It's too much and the effect is all haziness and I wouldn't use it. I don't think it's great for nighttime scenes where there's a lot of light sources directly in it. So as I said earlier, they come in all different strengths. And I think the one half that I'm using is a pretty nice medium because you can definitely see the effect of it, but it's not overdone. It's not like a one or a two strength where it's starting to look like a dream sequence or something. But I think if it's something that you want to just cause the highlights to bloom a little bit and to soften it up a tiny bit, I'd probably go with a one quarter or an eighth, especially if you're gonna leave it on all the time and use it constantly. This filter is used all the time in Hollywood on female actresses because obviously it makes their skin look softer, it makes them look younger, and a lot of DPs will put this filter on every time they're shooting the female in a scene, but then when they switch over to the male, they take it off. If you look closely, you can see a difference in the image when you're switching back and forth. When you buy a lens filter, you wanna be able to use it on as many of your lenses as possible. So I always recommend using step up and step down rings so that you can adapt it to all the different millimeter thread sizes. If you're consistently using a matte box, I'd recommend getting the 4x4 filter though and dropping it in because it'll work with every lens no matter what, but it is a lot more expensive. 
Another interesting effect of the black permis filters is that it actually raises the exposure of all of your shadows by just a little bit. This can be nice if you're going for more of that film or vintage look, or you just want more detail in the shadows. One thing to be aware of when you're using these filters is that anytime you put another piece of glass in front of your lens, it can have some interesting effects. Like for instance, right now there's this strange kind of like green aberration right here. And that's because of the black promise filter. And in the little short film that I shot when we were shooting directly into the fire, it also added this weird green aura to it. So just be careful of lights shining directly into it. If you are interested in picking one of these filters up, I've linked to them down below in the description. And if you wanna learn how to light and shoot better videos, hit subscribe right now. I have a ton more videos coming out on shooting, editing, everything like that. All right, I'll see you in the next video.